morning, Floss Tube. It is bright and early. Today is Thursday. I think we're all at that point where all of our days are just mushing together. I know mine is. Mine are. My day is. My days are. My words are more difficult to say too. So, I'm back again because today I have nothing to do. So what better thing to do than to record a floss tube? Plus, floss tube has kept me very busy. On Tuesday, I think I watched a good eight to 10 hours of it. So I guess I'll add my video because I'm assuming other people are doing the same thing that I'm doing. Just refreshing and refreshing and seeing if anyone's uploading anything new. I'm gonna try my best to make this as long as possible, which many people would say, that's easy, you talk a lot. But we'll see. How is everybody? You guys surviving? There is no rent for this week because last week my rent was to stay home. And I think by law, the majority of the places need to stay home. So that took care of that. I'm stuck on an island. Stuck. Which is fine. We're actually super, super fine here. We're safe. We have food. We have water. We have everything. And I haven't left the house since Tuesday. Today's Thursday. So, man, it's only been two days that I have not physically left the house. And I can already kind of feel the... I need to go to the store or I need to go and I don't know run an errand so that's two days in I'm sure you guys that have been doing this for longer whoa that's about she was trying to get the ball hold on no he got it he got the ball um I don't see I lost my train of thought thanks this much room Hey, Psst. you hear something? What's with you? This is gonna be a rough floss tube. But people voted, or not voted, but they suggested what they wanted to see. This is what they wanted to see. They wanted to see this guy. Yeah. Boo! 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 Okay, enough of that. Um, I don't remember where I was. No. Oh, that. I remember now. For those of you who have been sitting at home and unable to leave your house for longer than two days, I feel for you. I'm feeling kind of stir crazy. Let's see. So Tuesday was a binge watch floss tube day. Wednesday I watched some floss tube in the morning. And then I was kind of out of floss tube. Because, not, not out of floss tube. I wanted to start some new people, but then when you start a new floss tuber, you have to like go through the whole thing and like get invested. And so it takes a little bit of work. So, since I had watched a good 12, 13 hours of floss tube the day before, see how the, the hours keep increasing, I decided that I was going to watch something else. Justin Bieber. So, Justin Bieber has like a mini docuseries on YouTube for YouTube Premium, which I didn't think YouTube Premium was worth it, but I think it's worth it. You don't have commercials, you get access to like some content, you can download videos, which is really cool. Um, so this is not sponsored by YouTube, <laughs> but it, I think it is worth it. And so one of the little perks is Justin Bieber's docu-series, which was actually really good. I was a former believer. Now I am a refound, is that a word? Believer? Believer? So yeah, he has a very... I don't know. It was just, it was very interesting. 
And then I tried to watch this Tiger docu-series, documentary on Netflix, The Tiger, I don't know, Tiger King, I think it's called. I don't know what I'm watching. I have no idea what I'm watching. Like, I probably watched 15, 20 minutes of the first episode and Sir Gaspacho, he does not like to see animals on the TV. Like, he will attack the animals on the TV from the couch. It's a thing he does. But if he were to see them in real life, he would probably just freeze. It's just a TV thing. So I couldn't really watch it because every five seconds there's either a tiger or a lion or a monkey or something. And so you know how when parents have kids and you can't watch your adult like things, scary things or just adult content until they go to bed? I have to wait for this to be able to watch what I want to watch. He is my first son. What else? Lots of stitching. I've done lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of stitching. Like my needle is on fire. So Monday I did a full day of stitching. Tuesday I did a full day of stitching. And Wednesday I did half stitching because I did more stitching and frogging and restitching and frogging than I have ever done. And it was so frustrating that I just put my stitching down and that's when I started watching the docu-series and attempting the first episode of Tiger King. Tiger King. So yeah, it's been interesting. Uh, oh, so you guys know that I'm being super serious about the whole COVID-19 thing, but I already did that in the last video, so I'm bleh, pish posh done. Uh, I wanted to make a little section of COVID funnies. So my COVID funny so far is tw Tuesday our Prime Minister put a 24 hour quarantine in place. Um, he closed the airports, public beaches, the ports, everything. And which is really comforting. It, it's kind of scary but kind of weird it's, and kind of comforting. It's like a very mixed emotion kind of thing because our Prime Minister is a physician. And what he says is true. We do not have the resources to handle an outbreak here. So the best thing to do is to close everything up and not allow any tourism in basically. Which I agree with 100%, but this is gonna really hurt the Bahamas. Um, we just got back from the hurricane basically. Um, they were starting to rebuild and tourism was picking up again. So for this to happen and to shut everything down, really 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 gonna hurt a lot of people here but I don't know that's where the whole hurt financially or hurt hurt like death hurt and I know that's the battle around the world but anyway so he put that in place starting night starting on Tuesday yeah starting on Tuesday we before that we had a curfew so we had to be back at home by 9 p.m. So Monday night at 8.30, this is where my COVID funny starts. Monday night, 8.30, my husband gets home. He's on his cell phone. He's like scrolling like he normally does. And he just freaks, starts freaking out. 
he starts grabbing things and he's like, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go. I'm like, go where? What are we doing? I, what's going on? And so he's like, no, there's a 24 hour curfew in place starting tomorrow. Uh, I gotta go and get all my stuff so that I can work from home. Okay. So at this point in time, I'm wearing like compression shorts. And if you're a girl and you wear compression shorts, sometimes these compression shorts right up quite a bit. More on that. So we get into my husband's Jeep. He has like this big old beach Jeep that we recently purchased, but not my favorite purchase. And so we're like trucking through the safari of getting to his office. Remember it's 8.30 and our curfew's at night. So we get to his office. I didn't have time to change, so I'm in these booty short compression shorts that are writing up in places that they shouldn't write up, but they write up because they're compression shorts. And we go and we start unplugging computer monitors and plugs and we took the CPU and we just, we took a whole bunch of stuff. Like we just had all of the electronics from his office like in both of our arms and we're like carrying them down the elevator and stuff. I can see in the like security cameras things that I do not want to see again. <laughs> My everything is exposed on the security cameras. So if they were to ever accuse us of accuse us of robbery and theft and grabbing all of these electronics and stuff, those booty shorts rode way up. Anyway, and I'm like the whole time, who is gonna watch this? Like who has access to the stuff? What it, like this is terrible. Anyway, we make it downstairs and I'm like, this looks like a legit robbery. Like we are stealing electronics and products from the office and loading them into the Jeep and we're running away like as fast as possible to make it home in time for the 9 p.m. curfew. <laughs> well, we had the security guard at the office and the security guard at the office just, it was like a movie scene. Like he was walking and he saw us like loading all these things up. My shorts way ridden high. And he just kind of like looked at us and we were like loading things in. And my husband's like, good evening. And the security guard didn't even ask, like, what are you guys doing? I didn't see a bunch of electronics. He was like, good evening. And he just kept walking. So we load all the stuff back. We rush back home and we live in, um, in an apartment complex. It's like a community. We live in a town home. And so the gate, like the security guard is there, but because of the curfew, I guess what they were doing is like putting up cones and stuff so that nobody could enter or leave the residence. We made it back, I think seven minutes past curfew. And we had to just tell the security guard, like, look, we had to run to the office where I know we're seven minutes late. Please let us back home because we don't have anywhere else to go. And he let us in because he knows us, but it was, oh my gosh. It was so crazy. So then he set up his home office in our dining room. And that's that. Uh, he worked from home on Tuesday. Yeah. Worked from home Tuesday, worked from home yesterday, and then he just received like a special permission to go back to the office uh, along with two other employees. So there's three at his office right now. But I mean, overall, we're, we're doing okay. Um, our grocery stores from when I went on Monday. Yeah, we're fine. Did I go on Monday? I think I went on Monday. And then we have a really close friend who left the island and she left us with all of her food and lots of alcohol. So we're doing okay. I hope you guys are doing okay too. Uh, we're gonna make it through this eventually. It's just gonna take a while, but it's gonna be fine. And my only thing is my stash that's held ransom, quarantined in my parents' guest room in San Antonio. That's the saddest part about all of this. Oh, COVID funny number two. Let's see, let's see how many people can relate with me on this one. I wake up every morning and I'm congested and I have post-nasal drip. Uh, that's not new, I've had that forever. But I kind of overreact slightly. So I'm constantly waking up every morning and going, 
did I lose my sense of smell? So I start smelling things and there's, there's no way that I could get COVID-19 right now. There's no way, like I haven't even left home. I have like no exposure. The only exposure I have is my little doggo. But anyway, so yeah, I, that's another COVID funny that goes through my head all the time. Yep. Okay, let's go into whips. So my first whip will be Athena, Goddess of Wisdom by Mirabilium. I worked on her all, I worked on her quite a bit. I don't remember where I was last time I showed this, but I have worked on her quite a bit. Let me move my coffee. So started working up here. Skin is two over one tenth stitch. A lot of this is Karen Water Lily silks. And then over here, I had messed up and blended two colors that weren't right. So I had to frog that out and put it back in. It looks much better. It was like a green and a teal, and now it's like a green and a purple. So the colors make so much more sense. Yeah, that's where I'm at with Athena. Next is a whip slash new start. Oops, this fell off. This is my anti mirabilia It's like the opposite of any pretty stitching but it's like the alternate personality I have too because I love this stuff. So this is the Plague Doctor because we're enduring like a plague of our century right now. And this is by Busby Designs. I am stitching him, only the black on him. So we had two charts, or not two charts, but like two pictures that showed it. And he is looking fast. It's on 32 count linen, picture this plus, color is spice. And he is from my fabric stash. And he is stitched in DMC 310 black, two over two. So along with this new start slash whip, I am hosting a stitch along, a salve with Alex. Uh, I don't rem she has some numbers after her username, but Alex. And to join the hub, stitch along, it's super easy. You just start the project. And on Instagram, just use the hashtag um, Plague19SAL. And I'm sure I put it here. So hashtag Plague19SAL. And then, or tag us, uh, and or tag us in your pictures. And yeah. So. Trying to make light of the situation. And he's pretty cool. And, okay. So last time, I'm trying to make this long. I'm trying to make this entertaining. But I don't have too much to talk about. So this yellow pouch I showed, I think, last video, was supposed to go to San Antonio with me. Because it was going to get kitted up. So there's a lot of little projects in here that were supposed to get kitted up, but I haven't opened this pouch in like three weeks, two, three weeks now. So it was supposed to go with me to San Antonio and I never got there. So I'm opening it up for the first time with you guys. And I don't even know what's in here. Oh, look, see, I'm gonna get like all of these like reactions because I forgot what they were. So this guy is Little House Needleworks Needlework Shop. Look at how cute. So I wanted to kick this up by the classic color works and the DMC and a little fabric. Super cute. Ah. Then Suffrage Act Proclaimed, Suffrage Act by Little House Needleworks. 
So stitching with the sisterlies, um, s did a stitch along or is doing a stitch along for this, but I don't have fabric and I wanted to do the classic color works and colors instead of DMC conversion. So this one was going to get kitted up too. Then I had Cuore e Bate Cuore, Be My Valentine. Yeah. Or in Italian, I can't, it's backwards on the screen, so I can't see. But he's super cute. Wanted to get them up too. Another one that I wanted to get up. This is also by Cuore Bati Cuore and happy anniversary. Country Cottage Needleworks, Afternoon in Rome. So I recently went to Italy right before, well, not right before, but before this madness happened. It was in October. So I wanted to get that one done. It's a little piece. So cute. And then I had purchased these guys. So they're the cakes. I think I've shown these before, but I wanted to stitch them all up on one fabric. So I needed to, like they come with the floss already but I wanted to put them all on one. So I'll go through these again. I think it's, let's see, one, two, three, there's six of them. So there's cherry, lemon, you can barely see that, carrot, lime, strawberry, and blueberry. Yeah, all of those, I wanted to find one fabric for them, which is why they're in the kit up kit, kit up bag, finish kit up bag. Mm. Someone had commented about Pavlov, Pavlov's dog, Pavlov, Pla blah, blah, blah. Someone had commented about Pavlov's dog and crinkle sounds that it was like their reaction or something about their reaction. And it's so funny. I was like, yeah, me too. I love crinkles. Okay, some more stuff that I wanted to kit up. So L Forest Embroideries. Uh, I think they call it Sun and Moon in English. So I actually have the fabric for this one. I picked like some greeny jobelin looking thing, but I wanted to get some nice variegated floss because I, well, you guys have seen that I, hold on, I need to stop and then talk. So you guys have seen that I just stitched the whale by them. And so the variegation on their floss is super good. And so I wanted to do something similar, but to do it myself. So going and picking out the floss. So that's why he, they were going. Then the Cricut Collection Autumn. Same thing. I already had the fabric and I had all the DMC. But I wanted to go and see the other colors that they have because I wanted to get a more variegated look. Yep. And last but not least, these are True Colors Cross Stitch Flight of Fantasy. I really wanted to do this one and same. So I just wanted to get the DMC or yeah, the DMC I think to kit it all up. And they were going to get stitched, she was gonna get stitched on Picture this plus 40 count gothic. Aren't they so cute? I love them. So cute. 
and that's it. So that is all that was in my needed to get kit up. <laughs> like it's like it's nothing. Oh, that was it. That was a lot. But they will stay in this bag awaiting their trip to San Antonio. You hear him snoring? So French Bulldogs, apart from being lovely and cute, they're extremely high maintenance. So you have to clean his wrinkles and put like the special wrinkle cream, right? That's what you do. And they snore very loudly. This is like a medium snore level. They snore even louder than that. Yeah, it's like a medium level. And then the other thing that they do is that they toot. They pass gas and it stinks. Um, they're so little, but they're just so potent and they really knock you off for a little bit. Sometimes your eyes water a little bit. It's pretty intense. Uh, so when was it? It was like two or three days ago. <laughs> he was going to lay down here on the floor and in his laying down, he had a very loud audible toot like mid laying down. So when it came out, he shot back up, right? Almost as like, that wasn't me. That was, that was embarrassing and that wasn't me. And then he like stood up and just circled around a little bit just to make sure that everyone knew that it wasn't him. And then he laid back down. <laughs> he's just, uh, he's been really great during this whole nightmare of a mess of everything. So, there you get your little snapshot of him. This is the calmest I think he's ever been during me recording. He must be getting used to it. And then I don't know if you can see, probably not. I don't wanna wake him up, but he has a ball in his mouth. So he sucks on the ball and he'll like need to like soothe him and make him go to sleep. And the dog trainer that he used to go to when he was like a super puppy said that that also may be uh, a sign of early separation from their mother, which is super sad. So that's something that he'll probably never get rid of is that comfort of the suckling and the kneading. So sweet. You going back to sleep? So in the garage, we have a box full of cross stitch magazines, and I haven't thumb thumb I haven't thumbed through them because then I'll start like a million projects. But they're down there, and when I opened that box, I found dimensions kits, quite a few of them. So. Since we need content and we need things to pass the time away, let me show you the dimensions kits that I have here. So the first one is a mini a gold collection petites dimensions. I love Christmas stitching and Halloween stitching. So this is a toy shop. These are in the one day pile or if this thing lasts more than 30 years, pull out pile. This one's not a gold. This one is just a dimensions. This one is Sorrento Hotel. This one is Afternoon in Province. Afternoon in Province. This one's a big one. This is a gold collection, Holiday Village. Look at those colors in the sky. Wow. Again, Christmas. This one's another gold collection, Lakeside Village. 
again the colors so pretty so pretty can't even two more this one is Paris Market that is gonna be a lot of confetti so flowers and prettiness and this one actually was one that I purchased like a million and five years ago. Yeah, that sounds right. 2008. I don't know if that's when this came out, but I know for sure that I bought this in 2008. And I've never started it. This one is Midnight Dance. So those are my dimensions that were left off of last video because they were in a box. So I don't know if I want to put them back in the box or put them in my cross-stitch closet. That I don't know. Oh, I love this one. So I had to pause this and then go onto Instagram because I had put and ask me like requests or ask me what you guys want to hear from me or know or anything on Instagram. So thank you. People actually responded. That's really cool before it was like crickets it was like the stinky kid oh the ball i was like the stinky kid that nobody wanted to talk to just putting myself on instagram and it would be like my go-to gang clan that would respond because they don't want to make me feel bad but this time i've had the most responses that i've ever had it had it had it that i've ever had had it ever so um i wrote them down on a napkin <laughs> okay so the first thing that i had had it was specialty stitches love them or hate them i have a confession to make if back stitching is not considered specialty stitching then i have never specialty stitched I don't know specialty stitching. I have three shadowing projects at San Antonio that had been awaiting kitting, and I'm pretty sure they're all kitted up now. They're just, remember, held. They're probably all kitted and just still being held hostage. So, two of them, and I don't even remember the names of them. That's so bad when you have so many projects. Two of them were like uh, mini chatelaines. Like, um, gosh, I don't, I don't know. But each one was like one specialty stitch class, maybe? Where you learn like a particular specialty stitch and it will be in the project recurring. And then I have a huge chatelaine also don't remember but you'll see that eventually and I'm planning on doing the two smaller ones just to practice specialty stitches before I go to the big one I've always been a type of person that likes to challenge myself to a new skill even though cross stitching you would think that it's like you're just cross stitching there's so many little techniques and things or well there's so many little things that you can change or tweak so I try to do that on every project, just so I'm expanding my skills and practicing and doing that. Uh, so the Chatelaine will be the first time that I ever do specialty stitching or gourmet stitching. And um, it intimidates me a lot, but uh, Rika recently, I mean within the last year, I think she started her first Chatelaine. And I had asked her, like, ooh, specialty stitches, what do you think? And she said that with the diagrams and that, it's really not that bad. It's just scarier than what it actually is. And like anything, practice makes perfect. So you have to jump in at some point. So at this point, love them or hate them, I can't answer that question. I can just say that I'm intimidated by it and I will eventually dabble into it once I get my stuff and I start a new project. Uh, number two, make me laugh. You want a funny story? This isn't a COVID funny, but it's a funny story. So I was in college. It was, I want to say my anatomy and physiology class. I know it was science. <laughs> it 
and we were talking gosh this is one of those stories where you like you think about it and you just want to die inside because it's embarrassing and they probably thought I was such an idiot but this is all my dad's fault I'm convinced it's his fault he hasn't said so but I'm convinced so we got to talking about fire ants gosh I'm like sweating right now telling you guys the story fire ants so I have a pretty bad allergic reaction to fire ants like if one bites me my like it just swells the the bite mark and it, it gets hot and ugh, it's just gross so anyway we were talking about that I swear oh my goodness I swear 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 that my father when I was young told me that fire ants were an experiment gone wrong and these are the types of stories that my dad has fed me throughout my entire life and probably like thinking that they'll come out in adulthood and this is what happens so the story was that in my head he hasn't said that this is true that he's done this but in my head the fire ants were an experiment gone wrong that they were normal ants and in brazil in a lab they were creating fire ants i guess and they escaped and they got leaked onto a ship and made their way out into the world when I shared this like, did you know fact, they looked at me like I was crazy. And then suddenly I thought about what I had just said and I think I Googled it immediately and none of that is true. So that was when I was probably like 20 years old. Yeah, that's a funny. Again, my father does these things. So another funny, and so you can see a little bit more about my father's humor. We were driving and he had a bottle cap. He gave me the bottle cap and he said, on the count of three, very serious, he's always very serious. So on the count of three, I need you to roll down, no, he said, I'm gonna roll down the window and I'm gonna count to three. And when I count to three, I want you to throw this bottle cap out the window as fast as possible. I'm like, okay, of course. Like your father is telling you to do something. It's very important. He's telling you with the straightest face possible. So he's like, okay, you ready? I'm like, yeah, I ha I'm ready. I got the bottle cap. So he rolls down the window and he counts to three and he throws it and I throw the bottle cap like, Phew. and then it's just quiet. And I look at him and I'm like, why did we do that? And he's like, oh, I don't know. And they wonder why I have such terrible anxiety. Funny number three, I was terrified of fire drills and the fire alarm. So in kindergarten, there was a fire drill and it scared me because I thought it was not a drill. So then I never wanted to go back to school ever again. I cried every morning thinking that there was gonna be a fire drill. It was terrible. I have a lot of funny stories. I was a very strange child. So yeah, hope one of those made you laugh. Gaspacho content. Well, I think you saw the Gaspacho watching TV montage. I hope you enjoyed that. More OG time. He was literally like the focal point of this whole video. All of the gremlin noises. We got some snores and some gremlin noises. So check. Okay, this is a good question. So what, it, and I reworded it, this isn't how it came in, but what luxurious parts did you leave when you moved to the island or no restrictions at all? So my interpretation of that question is like, what did I sacrifice maybe? Or what things did I sacrifice when I moved to the island last year? Amazon. Amazon delivery, two day prime delivery is one of the biggest things that hurts in, on the island. It hurts quite a bit. Uber Eats or any home delivery food, that hurts. 
You guys don't understand how much I miss ordering junk Chinese food on like a Friday night. Ugh, I miss it. Then what other things? And see, it's not really luxury, but they're just like the commodities that I, I do miss very, very much. I miss, this is a Texas thing, but H-E-B, I miss H-E-B. That's like our grocery chain. I miss them a lot. I miss their pro the proprietary brands of H-E-B products. They have really good ones. Whataburger, another Texas chain, miss them. I've never been more Texas in my entire life. When I was in Texas, I wasn't Texan. But they always say that you move away and then you're like, you're Texan. Finally can feel like I am Texan because I miss those things. Um, what else? Another thing that we kind of take for granted is grocery shopping. Well, you know what? Maybe not anymore. So when you go to the grocery store, when you could go to the grocery store and you could find absolutely anything that you ever wanted in any brand, any flavor, anything, that's something that now I'm sure now you guys understand and miss because you it's been affected because of this whole thing but that was something that coming here when I would go to the grocery store I you you like your brands so like your sliced cheese you typically buy the same flavor or same brand of sliced cheese here it's whatever it's available whatever is available sorry speaking Whatever is available and one week it could be Borden sliced mozzarella and then you go back and it could only be Kraft sliced provolone. And that's what it is. And so if you want sliced cheese, that's what's available. And that's something that, so my husband doesn't go grocery shopping, but he doesn't understand. Like I'll come back with a, a salami or something. And he's like, oh my gosh, that salami was so good. Can you go get some more? No. That was it. Like it, it came, it sold, and it's not coming back again. For I don't. If I find it again, then I'll buy it again. But that's the thing. It's like you can't depend on the same thing over and over again. Or I found like the last bag of blue tortilla chips. I don't know when they received that bag, but that's the one and only bag. Once we finish that bag of blue tortilla chips, I don't know when I'm ever gonna get it again. Those are the things that sometimes you, for me it doesn't affect me that much, but if you're a huge foodie or you love to cook or you're looking for like a particular brand or a particular flavor of something, that can get really old really fast because you can't do that here. Uh, but I am forever grateful that here, since it's smaller, since there's not as much variety uh, throughout this whole whole panic and outbreak there have been limits put on all essentials so milk eggs toilet paper hand sanitizers any hygiene products anything there are limits in place because they're they're small local grocery stores they're not chains per se and each one has really i think we saw what was happening around the world and we said we don't want that to happen here and so I have gone to the store now and I have a lot of products that my family and you guys at home are going to these chain grocery stores and you, you're not able to get. So that's for the first time ever that I can say I feel that I have more access to products here than there. It's really kind of a backwards thought but I am grateful for that and don't panic by. And then the last one that I had was, do you prefer even weave or linen? It doesn't, so I shortened it in my shorthand notes, but uh, doesn't look as neat on linen. I have stitched now on even weave and I've stitched now on linen. Um, that one's kind of tough. So the skin, I guess, hold, let me get my project. Okay, so I have put my projects, like some of them, on my table here so that I can talk just a little bit about, and I hope I'm not making you guys dizzy. I'm trying to hold this as best as possible. Um, here are my, some of my projects on different linens, and there are different linen fabrics, different fabrics, sorry guys, 
And I was gonna talk a little bit about like the difference and my opinions on even weave and linen and different stitching. So we have the Owl Forest Embroidery Whale is on a 32 count linen stitched one over one. So I'm gonna try to get as close as I can while the, fo the camera focuses. So you see there, like there are itty bitty tiny X's. This is one thread over one strand of linen. And it's pretty, like I'm pretty happy with how the evenness of my stitches are here. This was stitched in hand, so there was no hoop or Q-snap or anything. So you see the one over one on the linen, pretty even. Now this linen doesn't have too many hiccups, but you'll see there like there's this thicker thread. Here you have another one. And that's just kind of part of linen. And I like that natural look, I do. So I'm okay if, I'm trying to see if I can find any hiccups or thicker, but I don't see any in this piece, but it happens. Maybe over here, like right there in the flower on that bottom stem, you see that thread is kind of out. That's the linen. So there's that, but it doesn't bother me. This is an even weave. This is a 32 count even weave and his skin is stitched one over one, which is the same technique as the whale. And that gives you that skin look, which you see is pretty good too. I'm okay with it. There are little sections that are a little more raised, but that's just part of stitching. And then the rest is two over two. Okay, so then, oh, and this one was stitched on a Q-snap. Then we come over here, so this is my latest whip. He is also on linen and this is stitched two over two. So you can see the difference between the two. Now, when you stitch with one color and there's not much color changing, your stitches are gonna be a little more even. And this one's also stitched in hand, which I feel for some reason, my tension is better when I stitch in hand, which is strange because it should be better on a Q-snap or a hoop or a frame, okay? And then, we have the skin on Athena. So on Athena, I tried a different technique. This is two strands over one tent stitch. So it's a half cross stitch. And I'm not loving her skin. I, it could be that I'm still missing the beading and everything that's around, and then it'll, it'll come together better. It could be the colors of the threads. It could be my technique. It could be the linen. It could be a lot of things, but I'm not loving, I'm not in love with her skin here, but it is what it is. We're trying a new technique and I'm trying to keep it the way that it was prescribed is what I want to say, <laughs> the way that it's recommended and charted uh, so that I can see the full effect. So if I had to choose right this second, I would say that for stitching a mirabilia one over one or see and I what I need to do is I need to test two over one stitching on even weave and see if that would make a difference so I don't know each project is so different and I love them for different reasons but if I had to choose a fabric my go-to fabric is definitely linen. I love linen. I love stitching on linen. Even weave is tighter to stitch on, like the picture of this plus, and I've heard that from a lot of people, it's super tight. So I don't enjoy it, but his skin looks a thousand times better than her skin. So I don't know if that answered your question at all, but that's my opinion on linen versus even weave. Thank you again for tuning in and watching me and hanging out with me again. 
Uh, you guys have no idea how much I appreciate hanging out with all you guys and the conversations and getting to know you guys and the comments. I read everything and it brings me so much joy and I'm super happy and grateful for all of you. Uh, continue sharing, sharing, like, subscribe. Uh, and ooh, one last thing, let me know how you found me because I'll get like little influxes of new subscribers and new comments and new likes and I'm feeling like someone else has recommended or shouted me out or something and I'm not finding out about it. So let me know if you heard from me through someone else. Comment below, let me know who. So that way I can one, thank them because what, what we're doing is we're making a more united community and I love it so much. So I want to thank them. And again, if you are going to share or, you know, recommend or shout me out, let me know. Let me know. Say, hey, like, I just shouted you out on my latest floss tube. And then guess what? I'm going to watch it and I am going to thank you and we unite everyone again. So um, please stay safe, stay healthy, enjoy the little things, smile at the little things, and don't forget to reach out to me. Uh, if you need a funny or if you need a picture of my dog or if you need something or you, you want to share something and you have nobody to share it to with me, I'm everywhere and I'm always on my phone. So <laughs> let me know. Anyway, thank you again and I hope you guys have a great day just or a great five minutes. Okay, bye.